This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And with the playing of our familiar theme song, we start the ramble. I'm Alex Bennett. I'm your host. We'll be here till midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, right now it's about five minutes, well, it's almost six minutes past ten on the uh, east coast of the United States. So no matter where you are in this great world of ours, you can figure that if it's that time, it's live. If not, you're listening to a replay, which is uh, kind of a lot of fun, too. Boy, have we got a lot to talk about tonight, and we will do that in just a few minutes, about 25 to be exact, after we talk to an old friend. Every week about this time, uh, we tend to have a discussion. I say tend to have a discussion because most of the time it's depressing and fatal, and you probably shouldn't listen to it because we will depress the shit out of you with Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Yes, sir. Good, good. How, how are you? On top of the world. Yeah. I can start off with a, uh, a rent control horror story. If you, want. you have a rent control horror story? Now, he, he, he has a rent control department. In San Francisco, California, where the average rent is now four thousand dollars a month, actually higher than New York City. Okay, hard to believe. And yeah. and he has a rent control department in which he's paying under a thousand dollars. Is am I right about that? Yeah, under under little under seven. So. Little under seven. Mm-hmm. So you're six hundred and change. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the exact amount? Do you mind saying? It's uh, six fifty. Six fifty. That's even. That's. Uh, it, I've almost. You've almost one, had one seventy of that is for the garage. So. Oh, okay. Oh. One se- The garage costs a third more than the apartment. As the apartment, yeah. So why don't you move into the garage? It's cheaper. I. Uh, you know, it, it's a nice garage. I could remodel that and probably have a better place. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so so what's your rent control horror story? A friend of mine knows a woman who's 90, and she still works, very active, and she lives at a place on somewhere on Union Street. Yeah. 90 years old, and uh, the guy is trying to evict her because she's got a dog. And uh, he's, hired, uh, he's hired a lawyer who he, his specialty is evicting elderly tenants. That's how specialized it's become. Uh, this so lawyer, that got me so this, pissed off. I said, if he ha- she has problems, we got to organize people and stop this. But. But this it's horrible. A lawyer that specializes, in especially e- not evicting people, evicting elderly people. That's, my God, that's, that's amazing. That's how ugly it's gotten out here. Wow, but uh, so so um, yeah, that's that's not good. No. Uh, I don't. I think they would have a hard time here in New York doing that. New York is very strict about laws where that sort of thing is concerned. And you get somebody who's 90 years old, and if she goes to, like, you know, a tenant court or whatever the court is here, because we have something going, but it's going on in Supreme Court, mainly because it'll cost more money. Uh, But uh, they protect... Really protect the tenant, you know, and and what? How? Why are they trying to get rid of her? Because she's got a dog. Well, I think that's the excuse they're using. They just want her out of there. How long has she had the dog? That I'll have to find out. Probably, if she's had a dog for years or had more dogs before that, and they've never complained about it until now, that could be used as an argument. It, yeah, I just think, uh, well, like you said, though, getting a ninety-year-old woman in court, I think. Uh, that's going to have a huge plus on her side. Yeah, but the problem is, if she doesn't have money, she has a harder time fighting it. And older people don't have money; they're on fixed incomes, and they they have a hard time fighting it. Uh, and that's why they pick on the older people. Exactly. They had it's really very predatory. Yeah. Uh, I, I and I, I won't tell this story, but something happened here that was along that line with an old person who went to the hospital and when he left they moved all his stuff out <laughs> um, 
you know, because he was in one of these rent control departments here where with you, rent control is one thing. Here in New York, rent control is another. Most apartments, I've, I've talked to you about this before, are rent stabilized. Uh, but rent control is even better because the rate doesn't go up as fast. And if you've lived in the, if, if somebody you know or uh, your parent or whatever, uh, what was that noise? No idea. Sound like you're. It sound like you're on a cell phone that was breaking up for a second. Oh boy. Anyway, uh, if you have a rent controlled apartment, and you're like you've lived there for thirty years or something, and you can literally in your will, will the apartment, the rental on the apartment, to your successor. Wow, and that'd be great. We have a woman on the first floor who was literally born in that apartment. Uh, and uh, her parents died, and she inherited the apartment. Uh, you know, but and the rent is just dirt cheap, okay. And and these guys are going crazy because they're renting other apartments for six thousand dollars a month in this apartment house. And they, they, you know, so all these old people that are here, they they're just waiting for them to die. But if they have <laughs> if they're rent controlled, they're not. They can pass that on to their successors. You know, that sounds like you got much better rent control there than here. Oh well, I, my my lawyer said to me, he said I go to lawyers' conventions. They say, "What do you do?" He says, "I'm a landlord tenant uh, uh, lawyer," and they go, "What's that?" Because in most other cities, this as a as a kind of law, it doesn't exist. Because here in New York, the the, the number one, the landlords have been notoriously predatory. For centuries, okay, and um, there is an actual court for this sort of thing. Uh, you don't go to a normal court for this. You go uh, unless, of course, you file in something like the Supreme Court, like this guy did. Um, so, so where you are, you don't have the same protections that we have in New York, uh, and uh, and and most of these protections side with the tenant. So, you know, but they would let your well, guys would love to see you go. They hope you're going to die. Yeah, well, there's three people in the building older than me that have been here, so <laughs> they'd like us all out, I would think. Well, because they're sitting on property that tomorrow, if you if you died or left or whatever, they could probably turn around and rent that out for thousands of dollars. Yeah, so then it immediately makes the building worth more. So yeah, there's. When did uh, rent control start in New York? Uh, rent control, uh, God, I don't know. This has to, rent control goes back. I know at least uh, there was somebody here who was living in an apartment that she got from her parents, uh, and she was born in that apartment in 1935. Jeez. And it was rent controlled then. Wow. Okay. So uh, she lived in there. Uh, I think she died eventually. But she lived, and I talked to her. She said, I was born here. I was born in this apartment house. Uh, and um, so that's the way it is in New York. I mean, it's great, you know, for renters in a lot of cases. But there are also these, these predatory landlords who will try and get away with anything if they can get away with it. And they're assuming that the people that they go after don't have the kind of money it takes to go into a prolonged battle, which they're willing to do. So, um, and, and this isn't just the landlords of my building, but pretty much landlords all over New York. I mean, there are some that are just notorious. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it's, it's very predatory, very predatory, so... Whatever. Well, that would be that would be that would be a great way to have your life end up being evicted at ninety. That. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a lousy idea? Good right. lord. Well, yeah. you know, right across the street there's an old people's home. So if I ever get thrown out of here, I can just walk across the street and knock on their door and say I'm old. You know. Well, how long is your situation going to drag out? Well, it's been it, this. We are now into our fourth year. Good. I mean, we, we, we just, uh, it, well, as of August, uh, you know, uh, well, actually, as of June, we entered our fourth year of this problem. But 
uh, because we stopped paying the guy that we were paying rent to rent, okay? Um, but when his rent was up uh, was in August. So it, we're over four years now, this going on. And I said to my lawyer the other day, I said, how many more years is this going to go on? And he said, I, I don't see it going on that long. He says, I think within a year we'll have this whole thing settled one way or the other. And he seems to, you know, he has, he has he's not, you know, lawyers are very close to the vest. They don't say, hey, you're going to win this thing, you know. But he feels that we have a really good shot at coming out of this okay, you know. And that somebody may own, 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 owe us a lot of money. However, that becomes problem number two. You then have to get the money out of that person. Yeah, you, you know, can win a judgment. Oh, and just never, because you never you, get the money. Yeah, I could. We could get it. We could get a three, four hundred thousand dollar judgment, something like that. And if, if that happens, try and get the money. You know. So it, it's it's it, you know it's just it's it's a mess. The only advantage is I've been sitting here not paying rent for you know three years. Um. And since I don't owe it to anybody, because I never signed a lease with anybody, and since, let's say, I, we were to move out tomorrow, the landlord couldn't rent this place out because it's in contention. So it's just as good that somebody's in here and keeping the place warm. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A weird, you've got the weirdest situation I've ever heard of. It's crazy. It's the weirdest situation in my life. You know, so, I, you know. But I, I don't want to go into it much more than that just to say that, you know, it's been just prolonged. And there's no way you can say, hey, judge, this is just going on forever. Just you make a decision. You know, instead, they're both both the landlord and the uh, the, the uh, guy who rented the place to us. He was he asked for judicial relief. You know, uh, uh, he wants a, the, the judge to make a decision based upon the facts as they exist right now. And there, there aren't. There's too much to be argued for him to get that. But to counter that, the landlord filed the same thing. They complained about his desire to have court relief on this deal, oh. and uh, uh, they're asking for court relief. Meanwhile, we're sitting in the middle of these two guys fighting, just waiting for the dust to clear so we can figure out who to get our money from. You know, I mean, it's, it's just it's weird. It's very weird. Uh, you in New York apartments, and uh, you lived in the apartment that was occupied by Bernard Getz. Oh, here in New York, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bernie moved into my apartment after I moved out. And uh, then he went down into the subway and shot those guys, and I feel terribly guilty about that. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. You know, here's how the universe works. If we hadn't moved out of that apartment, those that one guy who got shot and is in a wheelchair for the rest of his life would be walking around. Perhaps mugging people, but he'd be walking around. <laughs> you know? You, I, you you killed a promising career in mugging. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if the guy could, like, like sue for loss of wages. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd have to average what he's... Well, average what he is getting per year from his muggings. And well, I think Bernard Getz, if I remember correctly, got away with it. I mean, he went to court and he won. If I'm not I'm mistaken. trying to remember. I should know that. I remember it was, uh, I think I was doing my first Letterman back then. It was a big story in New York then. Yeah. But I forgot how it ended up. Hmm. Well, anyway, if he if he did have to spend some time in jail, whatever... Uh, he got out and then years later was busted for selling marijuana. Really? Which wow. I always found rather strange because I had been given the notion that, you know, he was very straight-laced. Yeah. And he wasn't. So, uh, uh, wait a minute, let me, well, let me look up Bernard Getz. We can find out what happened to him. We can Google that along with our physical malady. <laughs> Bernard Getz. You want me to put in cancer? <laughs> Bernard Getz and uh, <laughs> Bernard Getz. blocked carotid arteries. Yes, he, he's 69 right now. He was born in Queens, New York. Uh, books of people were there. Okay, no, here, here we go. Let's look up. Did he? Was he found guilty? Let's see. Getz 
surrendered to police nine days after the shooting, was eventually charged with attempted murder, assault, reckless endangerment, and severe firearms offenses. A jury found him not guilty of all charges except for one count of carrying an unlicensed firearm. That's a big deal in New York, though, Mm -hmm. for which he served eight months of a one-year sentence. See, that that was mandatory one year if you you were found doing something with an unlicensed gun. In 1966, one of the shot uh, the men, uh, one of the shot men who had been left paraplegic and brain damaged as a result of his injuries, obtained a civil judgment of 43 million against Getz. Uh, and uh, the incident has been cited as a contributing factor to the ground swell movement against urban crime and disorder and the successful National Rifle Association campaigns to loosen restrictions on concealed carrying of firearms. So, anyway, he, he got he got eight months in jail for the firearm charge. But he turned himself in. Wow. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. But yeah. Must have been before they had cameras everywhere. Yeah, well, I, I know the subway station he went into. I used to take it every day on, on 6th Avenue, the F train. Uh, and uh, he probably went down there, and yes, when he got on the train, and somebody just looked at him cross-eyed, and he shot at him. So. <laughs> Not that I haven't had the same notion. Uh, like when it's 3 o'clock in the morning, some people are under my window yelling and screaming in a drunken rage, I wish I had a firearm. Uh, and you could dump some boiling tar. I, well, I'll tell you what I did once. I was in an apartment on on Houston Street and it was like 3 o'clock in the morning and this club used to let out and all of a sudden I mean the people are just yelling and screaming and giggling and doing all kinds of things so I was up on I think the 6th floor and I went over to my kitchen and I got a big pot and I filled it with water and then I opened my window and poured it outside and you could hear these (laughs) you could hear Hear people laughing, and then all of a sudden, about it delayed because of the time it takes for the water. I don't know what how long gravity would take it for the water to get from the sixth floor down to the uh, down to the pavement. But you could hear this delayed reaction. Ha ha ha! What the fuck? <laughs> I felt so good about that. You know, I I felt like an old curmudgeon, but I felt good about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's justice. That's justice in its in its most virulent form. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you're what? If I'm not mistaken, you're what? Sixty one, sixty two now? No, I'm I'm hitting Medicare. Like, <laughs> oh really? Durst. Well, D- well, Durst hasn't. What? Oh, he's hit Medicare. He hasn't hit Social Security. That's it. No, oh, he's taking a late. He's taking. A, I think he could take it as late as seventy now. Social Security. Yeah, but he uh, he's probably going to take it at sixty six. It's sixty six in zero months now. He said. Yeah. Uh, have, are you getting Social Security yet? I took it. Oh. Yeah, I took it at sixty two. I like. did too. I did too. And I still get a nice. Mean? I get a nice little check. You probably don't as much because you were self uh, employed. Self employed. Yeah, you probably get the full amount, which would be uh, great, but. Uh, well, I get, I get a little over two thousand a month, maybe twenty one hundred. But I well, take I out, live on that. I take out two hundred of it because uh, I have to. It, it it becomes part of my income. You, you know, you have to pay taxes on Social Security. However, if it's under fifteen thousand dollars, of course, you're not going to pay taxes on it. But if it's over that, you're going to pay taxes on it. Plus, my wife works, so we, that adds to our tax bill. So I take, I, I have the government take out more than they should. So I get about like nineteen hundred, eighteen hundred a month, something like that. Uh, a, a, a lot of money to live on, folks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for all these years of hard. Well, you should have saved more, Alex. I know, but I kept taking comics out to lunch. <laughs> that stuff bagel. <laughs> well, no, that was free. <laughs> We used to have this place called the Stuff Bagel in San Francisco that was owned by a guy I knew. And for a plug every morning on the show, 
he would allow me to take all the guests from the show over to the stuffed bagel to have breakfast, and we would sit around and, you know, nosh away and have this, like, I guess Algonquin round table, if anybody knows what yeah, that Yeah, that was is. fun. And I remember, like, one day, I remember Leno holding court there and telling all the comics how they could make it in, the, in, the, in show business, you know, and they were all there with rapt attention because at that time he was the most successful of them. You know. mm-hmm. But we used to sit around and used to, you know, bellyache about stuff. And it was always, every day, if you did the show, you could head over to the stuffed bagel and we'd meet you over there for breakfast. So, anyway, that was, those were the days. Those were the days. First, they'll never happen again. No, I, you could never do that again. The radio barely exists. I mean, come on. You know. Just yeah, when when KGO is using three hours on Sunday to sell vitamins, it's, are they doing so, that? Yeah, they they they, uh, they will sell. It's a vitamin for three hours on Sunday afternoon. Some guy sells vitamins. Yeah, I I don't know what the story is with KGO. I didn't look yesterday, but uh, um, well, I no, the ratings will come out today. But usually, when I've looked, there's something like number twenty five or thirty in the market. I mean, that was that was a station that in its day ruled the universe for 35 years. Oh, yeah, years. they were number one for 100 years. For 35, at least since after they went talk. And uh, all of a sudden, one day they changed the methodology of the rating system. They stopped using these diaries, which were totally inaccurate, you know, because you'd fill the diary out for the first day, and then you'd forget to fill it out for the next six days. And on the seventh day... You go filling out the diary with all the stuff you thought you'd listen to. So it was not a good system. And then they came out with what was called the, the, the people meters. And this is a thing that you have that you clip onto your belt, and it just can tell every radio station you listen to, uh, or if you're not listening at all. And that changed the whole methodology, and it changed the whole perception of, of how stations were doing and it turned out the KGO, which they once thought was the number one station in the Bay Area, suddenly sank to like number five. Do you know mm. what the, you know what the number one station is in San Francisco? Sometimes number two. I guess probably a sports station. No, KQED. You're kidding? The, huh? the, I didn't think anyone the, listened to that. The, the PBS radio station in San Francisco is either. Sometimes I've seen it at number one, and it's at least number two in the market. Tell me that isn't amazing. That is shocking, yeah. Absolutely shocking. Well, when did they, what was this thing called they uh, track you with? It's called the people meters. It's just a, it's a thing, it, every station puts on its signal a little subcarrier that says what the station is to the people meter. So when you listen to a radio station, it automatically knows which radio station you're listening to. So if you're listening to KGO, it will register it in the thing. And if you change the station to something else, then it will also record that. And then at the end of the week, you send in the people meter. They download it into their programs and so on. And they come out with the ratings. Now yeah, I remember those old diaries were so inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a book. Keep this for a week. They they did have a people meter for TV, uh, so that they could uh, so that they could tell what people were watching. The only problem is they would leave the house and leave the TV set on, and uh, mm. that caused a great deal of problems because uh, actually the shows that dogs were watching got the highest numbers. So. Uh, it was that was strange, but anyway. Well, so whatever happened to the uh, Nielsen ratings? Well, Nielsen exists. That's TV, and they're still around. Yeah, uh, and uh, the ratings now for radio, I think, are Nielsen as well. I think they bought up uh, the company that was doing it. I don't know. I, you know, I haven't paid attention to ratings since I went to Sirius XM because they didn't ever get rated. They have no idea who's listening to what. It's serious. That's their big, uh, the big bugaboo about it. Like 
I think they probably that the music stations are the most listened to stations on Sirius, just simply because you get music without commercials. Uh, but I don't think the talk shows do that well. They like to think so, and they spend a lot of money on them. But I think if they actually got ratings on them, they'd find that their audience in the cars are not listening to that. You know. Yeah. And there's virtually no home listening when it comes to Sirius XM. So. So the old Nielsen's, those were big in the '60s, and yeah. uh, I don't know how they, I don't know how they did oh, that. They must have. Spent, we had uh, Pulse. They, they had, picked certain people. We had Pulse. We had Hooper. We had Arbitron. Now I don't know if Arbitron still exists. That was the radio one. It was Arbitron? Yeah, Arbitron. Yeah. Hey, listen. My how time flies when you're when you're griping. Um, right. <laughs> we're we're Kevin. The comedy team of Kvetch and <laughs> Complain. Kvetch and Complain. The Jew has to be Kvetch. <laughs> anyway, Bubbles, always a pleasure talking to you. Do it again next Love week, okay? Love talking to you, man. Okay, bye. Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, ready to go uh, and uh, get our uh, our uh, citizens panel going. <clears throat> we got a lot to talk about tonight, and I got some stuff to uh, present to you. Uh, but I will uh, I will do to that in a moment. Let me turn on our uh, Skype lines, uh, and uh, that would uh, mean that these people can then now call me using Skype. If you don't know how to uh, call this program, easiest way is go over to gabnet.net and right over there on the right hand side of the page it will give you all the instructions for all the ways that you can call us on this program one of which is the telephone oddly enough because we do have a telephone number and it's right there okay so be sure to uh, be sure to uh, check that out it also tells you how to use Skype and how to get Skype and uh, how to call us on Skype it even has an easy way for you to call us on Skype which is uh, a, uh, a button you push. It says call and there's a little Skype logo there and if you have your Skype open and on and you click that it will automatically call us. So it's that simple. Alright? So now we just wait for people to call us and I can't believe that people aren't just going crazy tonight trying to call because of the events of the day which we will get to in a moment. Here comes our first one. I just, I knew I could count on him tonight because how could he, uh, how could he take a night like tonight? And uh, we've been waiting for your uh, your your whirling around on us here. Let me see here. Uh, I don't think my picture is going to appear tonight. It's not going to appear tonight. Why? I would doubt it because I'm using my work laptop, and for some reason, mm -hmm. I just don't think it's. Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, there's your picture. Wait a minute. Now it's trying to. Yeah, it's try trying to do something there. Hold on a second. We're adding uh, some other people here as they call. Scott Boddicker has called us as well. Uh, Rob, just turn off your camera then. We can just see your, your picture. Uh, you say it's the laptop, you think? Yeah, because I, I the light comes on, but for some reason... I was trying to, you know, because I didn't have Skype on this computer. Yeah. So I put Skype on the computer earlier, and I went to the test call thing to to see. And when I turned it on, all it did was whirl and whirl and whirl. So I don't think it's going to. Wow. Well, just leave us, leave, us, leave us with your photograph, okay? And and just jump in anytime you want to because you've got a good enough mic that you can, you know, jump in pretty good. Uh, hello, Scott. How are you? I'm good. It's Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen, up in the right-hand corner of your picture, and Mike is in the left-hand corner of your picture. Mike even calls when I'm not on the air. I forgot. <laughs> I made a move, okay? I goofed, Alex. I, I apologize for my move. The other day I was doing some testing with Skype, and I had it open, and there's Mike trying to call it. <laughs> well, with you, you, ne you never know. What do you mean you never know? What do you do? You sit there waiting for the moment no. to arrive that you know that it's gonna it's gonna suddenly uh, be uh, uh, time to yeah, call, yes. time to call the program. There's 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 Phil. 
Hey. Okay, I don't even have to make my picture smaller because uh, Rob isn't there, so his picture is smaller than it normally would be. If it were wide, then be cutting off part of Phil's face. <laughs> even half a face is still better looking than Mike's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see it. No, I see Trump's uh, another rat left. Uh, Trump's uh, rat trap. Who is that? Ship. Who's that? Uh, the guy. I think he's the CEO for. No, no. He was. He left the his his advisory committee or whatever. He wasn't. It wasn't an appointed job. Right. Hey, uh, you know, something I heard on the news this morning, Kim Jong-un uh, dialed back his threat on Guam. So maybe Trump's strategy is working. I didn't hear that. Him. Did anybody else hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard that. You heard that? Yeah. I saw it on I... CNN's website tonight. Yeah. Well, maybe he just got smart, which is something that Trump apparently hasn't gotten. Well, maybe maybe Trump treated him the way he needed to treat him, and okay. the guy acquiesced and uh, is starting to realize that he's just a little punk. Well, you guys got four minutes to keep quiet and listen to something? Sure. Uh, because okay. uh, what I want you to hear is, uh, is our, uh, 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 what is it, what do we call him? I guess our, our Lord and Master. Uh, the il so, so, so il 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 douche il douche uh, support of his statement on Saturday. No, this is. Did, did you hear Trump today? No. Uh, good. You, I'm glad. Wait a minute, you didn't, I Phil. I guarantee you, after <laughs> listening to this, after you listen to this, yeah, you will change your mind about Donald Trump. Wow. I, I guarantee it. That's uh, huge. That's I guarantee huge. it. Well, if he doesn't, yeah. then we know he's an idiot. Okay. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump decided to hold a press conference today. I think it was a, it was going to be about something. I can't remember what the topic. Infrastructure. Was. Infrastructure, which is of course something that we're all, you know, pretty much uh, hot Neighbor. for, you know. And and hey, that's a good good thing. Go after the infrastructure, right? And all of a sudden, he breaks out into Trump song. He breaks out into a ad lib. Isn't that what the way it was described, uh, Rob? An ad lib uh -huh. press conference? Yes, I read the news story, but I have not heard this, so I'm oh. really excited. Okay, this is this is the essence of it. It lasts about four minutes. Okay, so have a listen. I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct. Not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement was a fine statement, but you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. And it's a very, very uh, important process to me. And it's a very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and just make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. If you go back to my, in fact, I brought it. I brought it. I brought it. As I said on, remember this, Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing. As to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. Here's the thing. When I make a statement, I like to be correct. I want the facts. This event just happened. In fact, a lot of the event didn't even happen yet as we were speaking. This event just happened. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. So I don't want to rush into a statement. So making the statement when I made it was excellent. In fact, the young woman who I hear is a fantastic young woman, and it was on NBC, her mother wrote me and said through, I guess, Twitter, social media, the nicest things, and I very much appreciated that. I hear she was a fine, really, actually, an incredible young woman. But her mother on Twitter thanked me for what I said. And honestly, if the press were not fake, and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. But unlike you, and unlike, excuse me, unlike you and unlike the media, before I make a statement, I like to know the facts. 
They don't. They don't. Here's the Andrew Ryan question. How about a couple of the minutes? Say it. What? You take a look. Uh, I've created over a million jobs since I'm president. The country is booming. The stock market is setting records. We have the highest employment numbers we've ever had in the history of our country. We're doing record business. We have the highest levels of enthusiasm. So the head of Walmart, who I know, who's a very nice guy, was making a political statement. I mean, I do it the same way. And you know why? Because I want to make sure when I make a statement that the statement is correct and there was no way there was no way of making a correct statement that early I had to see the facts unlike a lot of reporters unlike a lot of reporters I didn't know David Duke was there I wanted to see the facts and the facts as they started coming out were very well stated in fact everybody said his statement was beautiful if he would have made it sooner, that would have been good. I couldn't have made it sooner because I didn't know all of the facts. Frankly, people still don't know all of the facts. It was very important, excuse me, excuse me. It was very important to me to get the facts out and correctly. Because if I would have made a fast statement, and the first statement was made without knowing much other than what we were seeing. The second statement was made after with knowledge, with great knowledge. There's still things, excuse me, there's still things that people don't know. I want to make a statement with knowledge. I wanted to know the facts. Okay. Now, that is not all of it. I'm, unfortunately, I, I got only the, this one little clip, which I thought was going to have most of it because it was, uh, um, uh, it was uh, um, I thought it was going to have the main gist of it. But, uh, Scott, you heard it, didn't you? earlier did you hear it huh yeah it, it does it that that wasn't the main gist no the main gist was and this is exactly how he put it he said that both sides were wrong he backtracked on everything he said on saturday on that on when, when was it he did the retraction was it saturday or was it sunday uh, Monday. Yeah. Monday. 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 Excuse me. Monday. Monday. I, fr I forget this is it Tuesday wasn't a already. Retraction. It was a clarification. And, uh, Mondays uh, was a clarification. Mondays was a clarification. Today, the stuff he said, which I don't have, backtracked on all of that. He puked it out and drank it again and puked it out again. Yeah. Now, if, uh, Kevin, would you tell Phil exactly what he said today? <laughs> really? You didn't see that? Phil? I saw. No, no. I, I had a 6 a.m. Pilates class, and uh, then I went uh, okay, to work. Okay, okay, all right. So, anyway, Kevin, explain it to him, what you heard. Well, he basically said that both both sides were uh, responsible, and he insinuated that the alt-left went after the alt-right, right. and that that's why the whole thing got out of hand, but in my opinion... You know, when you got a guys, a bunch of guys carrying torches right off the bat, that kind of uh, stirs things up. They had a plan. They had a permit. Then they had the, to come in a certain way, and they, they did come in a certain way, and they blew all that right out of the water. They were the looking bat. for. They were looking for trouble. They were looking for shit. And, yeah. And and then for him to come out and represent the U.S. like that, and I'm, I'm not even going to refer to him as President Trump because I, I just can't do it anymore. But he comes out and, and defends defends all that. It was it was disgusting. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. It yeah. was disgusting. It was disgusting. And he, you know, let's be honest about it. Uh, he says, "Oh, there were a lot of people besides the KKK and the uh, uh, and the uh, Nazis there." Uh, right. And did you see the, uh, and, the lot of good people. A little snippet about yeah, David yeah. Duke. He said he never knew anything about who David Duke was or anything like that. And um, you know, thirty seconds later, they're showing a clip of him talking down David Duke and what a racist he was back what seventeen years ago. Wow. So he's he's doing the backtracking again. Yeah, but I mean, wow. what he did today was deplorable because what he did is he backtracked on 
he it's like he corrected what he said on Monday from what he said on Saturday. Today, yeah, yeah, it. it's as though he went back and just a little bit further because he now says, oh, the alt-left was equally uh, causing problems there and, and so on. That's not, that's not what the police say. That's not what the police say. They were defending no. themselves against these guys who had guns, who had uh, uh, baseball bats and everything else. They were ready. And, they were ready for a his, fight. They came with shields, and of course, they of course. Yeah, I gave them credit for it. They wanted to do an out yard barbecue. That's why they brought the tiki torches. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes, Mike. They're grabbing their uh, pitchforks and torches and going to storm the castle. Yes. Um, uh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes, okay. Mike. Why? Okay. It's, they say, quote, the KKK and all those little idiots say, oh, it's, it's going to be a peaceful march. Why are they carrying baseball bats, guns, and shields, and everything else? Can you explain right. that to me? They started, and and, and I, I guess you know their their premise was that they were uh, protesting the Robert E. Lee barn being renamed, and what was the, the statue coming down? I guess it was. Yeah. Yeah. And you, the, you know, you think about it. Your... These guys have been off in the woods, you know, playing banjos for the last 15 years or whatever. We haven't heard nothing from them. Mm -hmm. And now, old. Oh, now they feel emboldened. Oh, he's, yeah. He's yeah. Out and and, and he, he feels, they feel like they're entitled to come out now. Yeah. Now listen, let me, let me see if I can find. Let me see if I can find a little more of Trump saying stuff here. And pay them a fortune. So streamlining the process. Yeah. Correct. I want the facts. This event just happened. In fact, the last okay, here event we didn't even happen yet as we were speaking. This event just happened. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. So I don't want to rush into a statement. So making the statement when I made it was excellent. In fact, the young woman who I hear is a Okay, let me move, let me move woman, ahead just a little NBC. bit because we heard that. Her mother make sure when I make a statement that the statement is correct. And there was no way, there was no way of making a correct statement that early. I had to see the facts, unlike a lot of reporters, unlike a lot of reporters, Nazis were there. I didn't know David Duke was there. I wanted to see the facts. And the facts, as they started coming out, were very well stated. In fact, everybody said his statement was beautiful. If he would have made it sooner, that would have been good. I couldn't have made it sooner because I didn't know all of the facts. Frankly, people still don't know all of the facts. It was very important, excuse me, excuse me. It was very important to me to get the facts out and correctly. Because if I would have made a fast statement, and the first statement was made without knowing much other than what we were seeing. The second statement was made after with knowledge, with great knowledge. There's still things, excuse me. There's still things that people don't know. I want to make a statement with knowledge. I wanted to know the facts. Okay. Was this two questions. Was this terrorism? And can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist? Well, I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. Listen to this carefully. And that is, you can call it terrorism. You can call it murder. You can call it whatever you want. I would just call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. That's what I'd call it. Because there is a question, is it murder, is it terrorism? And then you get into legal semantics. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, horrible, Hold on to that thought, thing. that is bad of him to say. Can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist, Mr. Bannon? Can you Go talk ahead. about that? I, I would echo Maggie's question. Uh, Steve Bannon is I never spoke to Mr. Bannon about it. Tell us broadly what your do you have still have confidence? Well, in we'll Steve? see. And look, look, I like Mr. Bannon. He's a friend of mine. But Mr. Bannon came on very late. You know that. I went through 17 senators, governors, and I won all the primaries. Mr. Bannon came on very much later than that. Uh, and I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist. I can tell you that. He's a good person. He actually gets a very unfair press in that regard. But we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. But he's a good person, and I think the press treats him, frankly, very unfairly. Do you have confidence that Adam McKean has called on you to defend 
your national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, against I've the Hamas attacks. It. I did it the but last time. He called on it again, linking the Senator McCain? to the and Senator saying, McCain, you mean the one yes. who voted against uh, Obamacare? And he said who that is Senator, you mean Senator McCain who voted against Senator, us getting good health care? Senator McCain yeah. said that the alt-right is behind these attacks, and he linked that same group to those who perpetrated the attack in Charlottesville. Well, so I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm sure Senator McCain must know what he's talking about. Uh, but when you say the alt-right... Uh, define alt-right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, as no, Senator, define it for me. Come on, let's go. Define Senator McCain me. defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt-left that came McCain. charging him? Excuse me. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact that came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Sorry, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Do you think that the, what you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? Oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups. But not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me, and you take a look at some of the groups and you see, and you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not, but many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So, this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I this. wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? But they were there to protest. Excuse me. You take a look the night before. They were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Infrastructure question. Go ahead. Should statues of Robert E. Lee stay up? I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Are you against the Confederacy? ...about race relations in America, and do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time, and you can ask President Obama about that because he'd make speeches about it. But I believe that the fact that I brought in it will be soon. Millions of jobs. You see where companies are moving back into our country. I think that's going to have a tremendous positive impact on race relations. We have companies coming back into our country. We have two car companies that just announced. We have Foxconn in Wisconsin just announced. We have many companies. Okay. Well, that's enough I of see. that. That's enough of that. You heard the, the gist of it. So now that you've heard the gist of it, Phil, of course you're going to defend them, aren't you? You were sitting there smiling like you thought, oh, this was your hero. I, I liked everything he had to say, but I'd so, like uh, to preface <sighs> with something. Uh, as much as I hate Nazis, and I hate Nazis, uh, yeah, I, I despise them. I, I hate bigots, but uh, the one thing I am as an American is protected by the Constitution, and so are those people that I find vile and 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 despicable, mm -hmm. but uh, they have a First Amendment right, and if you take it away from them, no, then but what does this have to do with the first? That's, wait, what does this have to do? Wait a minute, no, <laughs> baloney, Phil. I, I, Phil, they don't have any constitutional right to carry damn baseball bats or hands or shields well, they, or weapons. You know, or and, and a lot of them showed that. that, that a lot of them. A lot of them. A lot of right them. A lot Thank of, a lot of those defense, they both had them. They right. both had them. There's, mm -hmm. there's no 
two ways about that. The thing that bothers me the most here is yeah. that these guys are starting to attach themselves to American history. They're attaching themselves to the Confederate flag like they have. They're attaching themselves to the Robert yeah. E. Lee. They're attaching them, and that's going to fuck up our history. You know, those things happen. They happen, and we're living the 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 result right. of it, right? So we don't believe that anymore. That's fine, but these guys are attaching themselves to that, and that's going to fuck up all the history. And I don't, I don't agree with that shit. I I don't agree with their position, but I I I have to allow uh, any any side to make their. But, uh, yeah, but you see, you're ta- you're you you are again sending us into a into a ditch to get away from the main question here of is this man fucking losing his mind? Absolutely not. I I agreed with everything he was saying, and I He's thought that uh, oh really that there was there was nothing wrong with what he said. He said that. Uh, he didn't want to speak to the facts until he knew the facts. Wait a minute. He spoke to the facts. He spoke to the. Obama wait a minute. He did. spoke to the. He spoke to the facts before he knew them when he originally made his original statement. He didn't, he didn't condemn either side. He said they were both wrong. Now then, I think that was his original statement. Then he read a statement, and he read the statement, and then today he puked it all backwards again. Uh, that's ahead, your Jack. interpretation. But yes, Jack. Hey. When has this guy ever hesitated to speak his mind? Exactly. You know, I'm talking about yeah. the Nazis. Hmm? The people I despise more than any other people in the uh, world. For, we know I, you despise Nazis and you despise the Ku Klux Klan. That's not what we're talking about here. Jack is bringing up a very already, important question. In five seconds, this guy put out a, oh yeah. a tweet about the CEO who was leaving his council, but he couldn't make a statement fast enough that in that with that same speed as exactly. uh, as as uh, as that for the uh, for what went on down in in uh, it was a di- whole Virginia. different level of uh, gravity. Oh, and uh, this oh, it was a whole CEO, different level of gravity. So have... wait a minute. So you have to you, you mean. You you have to wait. You can't. Uh, you have to wait like a, a couple of hours on something like that. But you can immediately tweet this other shit. The other shit was easy to tweet, and you should support no. that. No. You know because oh, what he said, bullshit. Bullshit. Said, wait a minute here. Uh, no. there, what he said was maybe uh, Mr. Merck, CEO. Uh, you can you can spend the extra time that you're not spending on a council lowering your over your over. Well, he, he not only lost the Merck CEO, he also lost the uh, head of the he, AFL CIO. He uh, lost. Oh, he lost. Oh, and it was a lot of the working people in this country. That, uh, Country. That wasn't a loss. Oh, it wasn't a loss? Do you know who the major amount of people were who voted for Trump? Working people. People who belong to the AFL-CIO. Uh, yeah. He needs uh-huh. the AFL-CIO. Uh-huh. I support him. You know. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, bullshit. yes, Jack. He lost six members of his industrial council today. Six now? Six. Wow. And by the way, by the way, may I now, also mention that the uh, people who make the tiki, tiki torches mm-hmm. uh, put out a, um, um, uh, a, twi- a tweet uh, saying that they don't agree with this kind of uh, behavior and that their items are mainly meant for outdoor barbecues. I swear to you, that's what they said. Oh, that's funny. That's, what they did. that's exactly what they did. Now, what about the pitchfork makers that use them in, condu- in conjunction with the tiki torches? There were no pitchforks. The there were no pitch. There were no. Messages. There were no pitchforks in, in well, this. Well, that's uh, how the unwashed masses go after the uh, guy in the castle. Well, your your friends, your friends, the the American Nazi Party and the uh, Ku Klux Klan and the so-called alt right, which gives it a, a a somewhat better patina. Okay and hides the real truth of who they are, all showed up with guns, with knives. They showed them. They were showing them to the press. I got a gun here. I'm ready for anything. And not just guns, Phil. They showed up, in some cases, with AR-15s, AK-47s, many 14s. These guys, these weren't hunting guns. Obviously, they they needed them against the liberal attackers. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Who, well, what did the liberal, you know, what did the liberal attackers show up with? Well, she, they, you know, hey, the the guy who actually did something used the Dodge Challenger, 
You know, he didn't use a gun. He wasn't a liberal. But but the thing is, though, no, no, that, he was a he was a Nazi. No, he, Don, we don't know that, that he was a Nazi. And here's the other thing. And let me mention this I, because said. I said something about it when he was saying it. The president right. of the United States referring to this guy as a, a murderer may get that whole no. case thrown out of court. He hmm. said yeah. that's not what he said. He said whoever was driving that car was a murderer. He didn't say that guy was driving the car. He said that the guy. Uh, whoever, I'm saying whoever, right now, I'm, right now, that if you're a good lawyer, you could probably get this case dismissed because the president prejudiced America against his he didn't, client. He didn't say the chubby. Right. Uh, 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 Rob, said, Rob, whatever. I'm, I'm going to ask what Rob thinks because uh, uh, we don't have a picture on him tonight, so we can't see his hand get raised. I need to ask Rob about yeah. uh, in Virginia. Well, do they allow firearms carry? Uh, open firearms carry. They do allow open firearms carry. So these people. I'm weren't having a lot of trouble tonight with my, my yeah. Skype. I'm hearing like a, I'm missing a lot of what's going on because of. Yeah, well, I was broken. You need too. to reboot your uh, your uh, router or uh, modem. I'm in a I'm in a hotel room in Plano, oh. so. No. Oh. Plano, Texas. Well, why don't you just yeah. run, why don't you just run over to Scott's house and sit in front of his camera? <laughs> hey, let's all get together for lunch tomorrow, guys. I wish I could, but uh, I'm in an office and I don't have a car. They wouldn't. What? They wouldn't let me rent a car this trip, so I'm stuck He's at the Marriott yeah. Legacy. <laughs> I'll pick you up. I'd... You get free breakfast at the Marriott. Scott and I'll pick you up. <laughs> I'd do that tomorrow evening. I can't do it during the day, though. How about lunch? Um, we're not, it, it, I'm not sure. It, call each other, okay? Let's not take the <laughs> show time. Hey, if that's my bookie calling, tell him I'm going to pay him off. Um, hey, Alex. Yeah. The, the, the sad thing is the Trump administration is doing major damage through the EPA, through the Department of Justice, when we're distracted by all this theater, he is trashing so many other things that's going on that we don't have time to keep track of it. Right. And and I got I, I take umbrage about the CEOs that are leaving the council. They're only leaving the council because they know they're not going to get their tax cut now. So don't put too much faith in that. I don't think. I don't think that's the reason why, Tim. I think you're reading too much. Well, I think it's a combination, but... Um, I think I think that if you're a major company, you don't want to be associated with this flack. Yep. No, you can't. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get people to stop... Uh, I think Amazon still advertises on Breitbart, but that should end soon, uh, pretty soon, too. Uh, my friend's carpet store is installing the carpet at the White House. Wow. And, and they had to roll it out in the driveway. Well, why did you pull that picture? Why did you pull that picture out when we were all trying to listen to Trump? <laughs> oh, it's the White House. <laughs> well, how come you didn't get the contract, man? You're one of the biggest Trump supporters I know. I'm geographically undesirable. Well, yeah. you didn't cut him a good enough deal. Yeah. Well, that's that's a possibility. That's more of a possibility. You know, I, I said really to the guy, I said, uh, uh, you know, were you low bid? And, and <laughs> that's all right. He won't get paid anyway. He won't, yeah, I was just gonna just. Yeah, yeah, I wonder yeah, how much. I wonder how much longer it's going to be before the shut down. before the Republicans completely distance themselves from Trump. Uh, because it's not good for business. This guy is getting to be a, you know, I mean, this thing today. Nobody at the White House knew he was going to say this stuff. Did you see yeah. Kelly's body language when he was standing there mouthing off like that? No, Kelly. He was standing over there with his arms crossed and just looking down at the ground going, oh, shit, I didn't tell him to say this, and he's going off. You know, I, it, it, like he, was, he was not happy with his job at that point right there. When he I was saw, trying to remember his invis invisibility spell. Yeah. He when wanted I to disappear. Saw, when I saw it, I thought he was thinking, God damn, why the hell did I take this job in the first day? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why did I take the job? He should resign it. You should, everybody should resign. Just everyone walk out. What do you think about Pence? I, He's raised more money than any vice president in history at this point in time. Pence is loving it. And then, of course, you're 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 watching the knife go in the back of Bannon's back, which really doesn't bother me. But you know, 
it's going slowly in, you can tell. That's going to happen. But he, he, did, he can't fire Bannon because Mueller, Mueller will be easily flip Bannon because Bannon's not tied up to the Russian stuff. Yeah, and they say that Bannon being on the loose might be worse than him being in the White House right now. Yeah, and, and Priebus is maybe flipped too. You know, but yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a freaking mess. It's a, and, and it just it got no better today. You know, when you think things are going to get a little better, or you're going to kind of sit back and go, "Okay, we got through a day." Something happens every fucking day. I mean, day. if you were him, let us if, down in our greatest time of need. If, if if you were him in in this particular situation, would you have chosen today to do your infrastructure speech to the press? You know, you no, you wouldn't. You would. St- Stay as far clear of anything as possible. You would lay low for several days. You wouldn't tweet. You wouldn't do anything like that. You'd let because once a news cycle is flipped enough, then it, you kind of got smooth sailing. Okay, yeah. but no, he had to go out and just stir the fucking pot up more than it was already stirred up. Weren't the or come up and do his, weren't do the his infrastructure speech and get the hell out? You know, he could have done that too, but he yeah. didn't. Pa- uh, uh, Tony, question. Tony. Yeah, you know, you know what bothered me when you played that back too. I mean, I could be wrong, but it's like his ego. Like, why does he feel the need to be like, oh, the the poor girl who died. Oh wait, the mother. She just sent me something so great. Right. And it's always like, is he fucking for real? No, he's... it's like he always has to have his cock stroked. Oh. I mean, it's disgusting. Tony, he's a narcissist. He talking? really is. It's like I've been. Alex, I've never seen anybody. I, I think really, I'm telling you, I think he's going to drop dead in the White House. I really do. Well, I'm, ho- I, I'm really. hoping. I'm hoping so, and so so are a lot of other Americans. But uh, Alex, how does he say that about somebody? Like it's always Jim mentioned. Like he's always about him. Mm-hmm. I think. I say we all get together and wish him dead, and if we all do it as a, as in uh, by the millions. It may have enough force in the universe to bring it about. You know, they often said that if you if you stood, took a cook person and put him in the middle of a football field, and then had everybody in the football stadium, or even better yet, a soccer stadium because they're larger, all concentrate on this man dying, that he would drop dead from just the mental energy that was being sent his way. So maybe we had to have a day of wishing Trump dead. I got it for you. They already tried that with Obama, and it didn't work. Oh, really? Did they? <laughs> yeah. There was, a, there was a bunch of fundamentalist preachers. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, they were going to pray I, for I, yeah. Backwards, I, Alabama. I, I bullshit you not. Mm. There were a bunch of Southern fundamentalist ministers yeah. okay. who had their congregations praying for the death of Barack Obama. Wow. That's my country. But you know the thing that's really scary? What's that? Is this. Go back to the images of Friday. When, you know, with the guys with the with the tiki torches and all of that. Mm-hmm. And the chants that they were doing. Right oh, out. That was terrible. Right Blood out, and soil. Blood and soil. Yeah. Right out of Hitler's Germany. You will not replace us. Jews, Phil, will not replace us. It's funny that and these these people feel that they're truly Americans, right? These right wingers, they think yeah. they're 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 real Americans, and yet the most predominant flags in that group were Confederate flags and Nazi flags, and you yeah, didn't see any of them. The I didn't see any of them carrying American flags. They both lost wars, but the thing is, I want to bring this up. You know, the president, or or as Brian calls him, oh, full of shit. <laughs> that's funny, yeah. That's, that what, is that's, funny. that's what Brian in Pennsylvania. Full of shit. Full of shit. He was. He brought up the uh, the question of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'd like to remind the president. Robert E. Lee was a traitor. Robert E. Lee fostered the idea of breaking up the country. Well, that's you know? And and if you go to Germany, and I've 
I've been there. Alex has been there, I think. It is illegal to possess, to sell Nazi memorabilia, yet we let No, you can sell it. You can sell it. You can sell I've, it? I've seen it being sold, yeah. But if it's displayed in a store, right. the right. swastika right. has to be covered by a piece but, of tape. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because in America, we have a people have a right to, oh, and, and, uh, wait, no matter oh, how despicable. And, oh, German, to, Germany uh, isn't a democracy? No, not, not like the Americans. Oh, uh, oh, really? I think it's probably more of a democracy than we are. We're an illusionary now, democracy. Now, we, now, it was the ACLU that gave these animals the ability to, to do what they do. They, you're, there you're, were many. You're, you're, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want, I want uh, Phil to tell me how the ACLU allowed them to do it. Uh, well, the I, ACLU I know what he's going to say. Uh, Go ahead. Presented uh, the Nazi protesters. This yes. is at least thirty years yeah, ago. Yeah, now that's thirty years ago, Phil in Skokie, but it, it, in but Skokie, it Illinois. Precedent. Yeah, it gave them precedent, and it gave them the right to do no, this. No, they no, they were they were defending people's right to assemble, to peacefully assemble, to peacefully assemble, Phil. Uh, and the fact that you're bringing that up is the reason why it's all the fault of the ACLU when they were standing up for your rights by doing uh, it and, that, and my rights fault. as well. I said, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't you don't see the ACLU negative. jumping in to defend this guy that drove his car into the, uh, into the crowd. So that has nothing to do with free speech rights. Well, Phil... Free speech. Right now, let me say this. Let me let me say this. I'm kind of at odds. I think I said this the other night about the statue of Robert E. Lee. You know, I think it's a piece of history. Uh, I don't see anything horrible about it in particular. I don't think it's particularly racist. I think that there were a lot of people who, right after the con the uh, uh, Civil War lost people on the Confederate side, and they wanted to honor them with memorials and whatever and say our people are dead, and I guess one of them was Robert E. Lee. This has gone beyond being a, a, a symbol of racism or anything else. It's a historical artifact, okay? And well, I agree with somebody who said it would be better off in a museum Yes. Uh, than it is sitting out there in the middle of a park, however, in, in Char is it Charleston, Virginia. Um, so I mean, is, but I is it, 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 it's part of our history, right? Yes, right. And there's a lot of bad things that happened in our history, and <clears throat> you don't see people attaching themselves bad. You know, these groups, these neo-Nazi groups, attaching themselves to other things, but they go after something like that, and that's so what makes the Nazis that's what don't don't go after shit. the symbols. You got to go after, you know, you, you can't, it's like blaming the gun for people uh, for shooting deaths. It's the person who pulls the trigger. Go Phil, after Phil, the, let me just say this. The easiest thing in the world for the president to have done was, would be to have said nasty things like he says in his tweets about the KKK and about the Nazis. Uh, as far and, as I know, he, he recently came out. No, he didn't. And said, no, he didn't. He 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 came out. He made that statement, which was pre-written for him. And then today, ad yeah. lib, he yeah. says what he was really thinking. Okay. okay. Hey, Phil, so yesterday so, we heard what was in his teleprompter. Today yeah. we heard what was in his heart. Yeah. That's yeah, yesterday, okay. yesterday was what Kelly told him to say, and today was what. Kelly wanted him to say, and he didn't. How long do you think it's going to be before Kelly just gives up and said, you're well, on I your own? Well, looking at him today, I don't think it would be very long. Three months. Three months. I don't think he's going to give up because of, he's going to, he's he's a loose gun when it comes to North Korea. Yeah, or he'll kick his ass. <laughs> well, but yeah, but if you're, trying to, if you're trying to take this White House and your job that you were tasked with was fixing, the, may, fixing the mayhem, yeah. And you've got this guy who is preventing you from doing that with everything he's got going. You know, uh, I mean, how long do you want that job? I wouldn't want he's it showing, very long. He's showing, the, the, Trump is showing that he'll tell you one thing on his way out the door, say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this and do that. And then when he gets to the podium... He goes apeshit. Yes, I'll strict. I don't stick, think stick. Kelly will want to fail, and the only way to fail is to give up. No, no, what? he could. He could just leave no. and say, "Hey, I think he's got a pretty good all. excuse." <laughs> what are you? What are you saying, Rob? Go ahead. 
the only way to fail is not to give up. He he's set up to fail because he doesn't allow anybody to lead him. He has to lead everybody. He went out okay. there with the ex- with the express purpose of saying something today. The press wants to talk about something, and then he can't help it. He could he could have sticked with what he said. He he could have said to them, "I made a statement yesterday. I've denounced this group. I've denounced." But instead. He has to. He can't help it. We he, know yeah. that Trump has uh, some issues when it comes so? to dealing with the press. Oh, and he's some? He's, he's just, just the press. I'm he tweeted about a train that. killing a CNN reporter. He's a psychopath. Look, he has no he, feelings. Talking about Kelly and the job that he's been charged with, and I don't believe that he is going to quit. Nor do I believe that he is going to allow. If himself this guy will, if you're trying to tell this guy what to do to make things better to clean up the reputation of the highest office in the land and you don't and he doesn't listen to you are you going to stick around very long uh, no. the only way to fail is to quit well no, no you don't true. fail you if quit. you quit you leave with your dignity and to, and to be associated with this colossal flop of a, of an administration no you, i you, don't you know what you might stay alex why to keep him to keep trump from the nuclear codes because they kept the nuclear codes from Nixon in the final few weeks. Yeah, did they really? Yep. Yeah, because yeah. he was drinking yeah. and he was depressed. He was I'm psycho. Sure. I remember yeah, that. He was, he was, he, 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 he was, I, it, he was talking to the paintings. Right now of a nervous well, Chuck, breakdown. He was, he, ta- he, he was talking to the paintings. No, no, I know he doesn't, but he was depressed. And he's, he's not capable no, of making well, decisions. No, let me put it this like way. The difference between I, Nixon... I, I, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. The, the, the difference, di- difference between Nixon and Donald Trump is it took booze to make him a loose cannon. Trump just is. Yeah, Trump's crazy. Yeah. Well, we, <laughs> he's, he's sort of probably crazy. I oh, I think he's nuts. I think he's certifiably yeah, nuts. You're right, Alex. I think he's really crazy. There's no control. Crazy. I mean, no today, self-control. today yeah, yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, you go back and you restore your goodwill to a certain extent, okay? And today, you completely throw that out the window. That's because yesterday wasn't genuine. Yes. It couldn't yes. help it. Yes. It couldn't y- help it. Yes, press, and, and, I think, and I think Tim was right when he said that yesterday he read what was in the teleprompter and today he said what was in his heart. It was like killing him to read that, probably. Like he's so he came out today mad, like fuck. Yeah, I have to sell this. Jack, I love David, yeah. too, but I gotta say this shit now. It's like I have to eat okay. shit. Jack. He's not I want to ask Phil Meyer, as a former police officer, since he brought up the question of free speech. I got a question for you, Phil. Go ahead. There are people who would argue that. Having the right to possess child pornography is an expression of free speech. No. What's the difference? Well, wait, yeah. wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There, there are there are laws against child pornography, and there, we can and we can enact laws about Nazi. Oh well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me let me oh, let, let me them. let me to begin with uh, secondarily, Phil. You were talking about free speech, freedom of expression before. Yes, and yet, yet somehow, child pornography does not come under that category. I don't believe it does. You don't believe it does. What if the person in the child pornography is eighteen years of age, but they're portraying them as being fifteen? Then there's nothing wrong with it. Then how come you can arrest them? And how come they can be charged with child pornography, even though that person is not of illegal age? You, know, you probably know more about pornography than I do. Yes, I'm I do. Sure you I do. happen to know. And, uh, and, and, far, you, and I, can, I can talk to an expert on it, but as far as, uh, and, and get back I to I am my, an expert on it. No, well, I, I happen to know. I ha- I'm a bigger I, expert than le- any ex- legal expert. Well, I have talked to many, subject. I've sat down with many a lawyer because I, when I was involved with Midnight Blue, I wanted to see what we could do and not do. And uh, when we, we talked about this very issue, and that he said the strange thing about it is, is if you have like a 19-year-old and she looks like she's 15 and you say she's 15 and then you have somebody have sex with her like she is a 15-year-old, you can be charged with child well, pornography. The, the people I will confer with have actually prosecuted uh, child pornography cases yeah. and arrested Why don't you ask a few people who have defended them? 
Uh, I don't know anyone that defended well, them. I was a cop. Th then you're going to talk to somebody who's just as skewed as the <laughs> other right, side. The prosecutor, and how many not gabnet bucks are you willing to put up with me that Alex is wrong? I said that my knowledge of child pornography probably isn't as great as Alex's or my knowledge of pornography, because believe me, these are two areas that I have not explored in my life. Have you ever, have you ever, have, have, have you ever seen, uh, what do you call it, uh, what was the kind of porn where they killed somebody in the, in the porn? Uh, yes, yeah, snuff, snuff films. Snuff. Yeah, have I've you ever seen, seen a snuff film? I've never seen one. Do you, do, how many do you think there were? For most people, it was only one. <laughs> no, no, no. How, uh, uh, no. No joking. How many people? Do, how many people do you think? I have how no many idea. snuff films were there? One, two, know. three, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. The answer is zero. But yet, the United States government was saying that there was such a thing as snuff films to discredit all pornography. Yeah. Oh, really. That was you and your cops. It wasn't me and my cops. My cops have to yeah. prosecute actual crimes. No, I see. Okay. no, you guys didn't prosecute. You enforced the law. That's not. And you think you were prosecuting actual well, crimes? There were district attorneys and. Uh, uh, are you, you well, sure that everybody that was ever arrested under your purview was guilty? I don't know. My job wasn't to determine their guilt. It was to identify and, uh, and document. And, and do you uh, think that maybe they went to trial and were found guilty because they didn't have sufficient uh, uh, counsel? That's a possibility. Do you know, do you know that did you, there was a big story on CBS Sunday, new, uh, the Sunday show about, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the attorneys, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Oh, God. My mind's Attorney going. I, uh, huh? Attorney General? No, no, no. The people who, who defend the uh, public defenders. Oh, yeah. yeah. That the public defender system is completely broken. I mean, they put a thing in the Constitution that said you have to have legal counsel. Uh, but they, they do everything they can to just give you the minimum amount. Like, uh, you won't see your lawyer till trial day. And then he just tells you to plead guilty. You know that that you know that, that the idea of a, of a of a public defender is is a complete laugh. They said that's why it's chance. almost non-existent. So if you don't have the money yeah, to defend yourself, I'm sorry, friend. You're going to prison, even though you shouldn't be there. Yeah, he's right. That's a good point. Yeah, and you were arrested by somebody like Phil Meyer. Magic Phil, and you up against the wall. That's right. That's right. What I do. Don't you feel Alex? guilty, Phil? Pardon me? Don't you feel guilty? I do believe not. Oh, okay. All right. Alex, yes. inform, inform Mr. Meyer about, uh, oh, geez, comic, uh, Lenny Bruce. Yeah. And what Lenny Bruce went to jail for in the free city of San Francisco. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's yeah, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Uh, yes, it was, he used, in his comedy act, he used the word cocksucker. Yeah, and uh, uh, that's what they charged him with. I can't remember whether he was found guilty or not, but all I know is that when the trial was going on, it said a certain seven-letter word that he uttered in his act, and everybody on the bus going to work that morning were like counting on their fingers, trying to figure out what the fucking word was. And I do believe he was found guilty by... 12 Good Men and True. Yeah. Because in one of his albums, he did a thing, What I Went to, uh, what I went to Jail for. And uh, he said, I can't say it because uh, I think he might have still been under indictment. But what he said was, I went to jail for saying blah, blah, blah. And that's how he did the, did yeah. the joke. Uh, yes. So you can go to jail for saying cocksucker, something I rather enjoy. Mm -hmm. Uh by the way, we have. A, by the way, we have a full house. I should mention. You can go. We have a saying here in Texas that I dearly love. That a district attorney. What is that? That's a toilet flush. Phil, we have a saying here in Texas that a district attorney can get a ham sandwich indicted on the right case. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so I mean. 
Yeah, you know, it, 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 eventually, this president is going to do something that's going to endanger all of us. You know? Oh, I guarantee that's what I said that months ago. It's going to be a major catastrophe that, yep. that's going, that, that is going to change the face of the world in his, in his, in, during, under his watch, however long that lasts. It's, it's probably going to be something he says as opposed to something he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he flies off without thinking about it, without using counsel, doesn't stri- stick to a script when they sit there in the office and they work on it and they work on it and he approves it and then he goes out there and then he starts ad-libbing and, you know, everybody gets apoplectic. Yeah, I, I hate to say it, but I wouldn't be surprised if somebody, and that's as far as I'll go. I don't want to say stuff like that, but... He's pissing off a lot of people. Uh, have you, have and, you heard and, the latest leaks out of the White House? The, what you know what he does when, when he has a bad week, Turn he off. fires people on Friday. Think of that. So Bannon, they are. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Oh, oh is that is that Brian making Brian. that noise? Yeah. Brian, Brian, mute your mute your mute your phone. There, mute, mute he your fires Skype. everybody on Friday. Yeah, at least you get paid. Well, that's that's a typical corporate move right there. Mm-hmm. Right, they always fry her on Fridays. Yeah, at least you get a full week's work out of them. Yeah, right. what is all this? What is all this noise going on all of a sudden? It's Brian, Alex, I think. Yeah, yeah Alex, Brian, you're not you the thing we used to hate in radio. Then for the program director to come up to you. On Friday just before your shift and say, "Hey, Jack, would you mind stepping into my office for a minute?" Uh, well, what yeah. what Albert used to bring up was it, it's you know you're going to get fired when the when your boss meets you at the elevator when yeah. you're coming to work. I, I have my legal expert will be calling in two minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. And I don't want him. Way. I don't want him. I have too many people now. No, you you can have a royal. I, flush. I, I don't want him. It's too late. Well, I well, can. Ha- no, what do you mean it's too late? Too I'll hang up on him when he right. calls. Who is your legal What's expert? Right? Hmm? Who is your legal expert, and why should I accept him? Uh, he's a uh, retired uh, police officer who oh, was oh, who, who worked sex crimes and uh, pornography and child pornography. So, yeah, you can't yeah, bring yeah. me a prosecutor. Don't bring well, me. Yeah, a you, he, yeah. Uh, yeah, just also retired from the San Francisco DA's office as a DA investigator, senior DA investigator. Yeah, I don't buy. Okay. It. See, I don't. I don't. Uh, I I wouldn't listen to a word he had to say. Well, he can join the conversation. No, he can't. We have a full house. Well, then I'll get off. <laughs> well, then, uh, then we'll be. There won't be a full house anymore. Not, not a royal flush. <laughs> I, I was premature in my in my toilet. Uh, no, you were flush. premature in calling, in, in writing this mm-hmm. guy and telling him to call. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. You had a few old girls that said you were premature in some other places too. Hey, I would love that. <laughs> Not now, not I'd now. I'd rather apologize than... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but is he Republican, Phil? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. The trouble uh, with Phil is he's actually guilty many times of premature evacuation. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not sure. He's, um, he's Jewish. Who's well, that's a step in the right direction. There you go. Boy, babe. Oh, well, if he's Jewish, he's almost a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he was almost a doctor. Um, no, I'm just, I'm, re- I'm really, I'm really worried. I'm, I'm really scared. Uh, I'm not scared of Kim Jong Un. I'm not. A- well, yeah, you notice that that's kind of gone by the wayside now. Well, and not really. Picture, it- not really, but I picture him sitting there going, you know, I think I'll hold my finger over the button and not push it until this guy. He might just do it himself. No, I think what happened you know, is I think it's going to take Kim several weeks to get ready. No, but what what happened is this latest flap has kind of changed, uh, you know, made everybody forget about the other story that was going right. on. Right. Right. You know, and that's but, what he does. You and, know, and and he's taking credit also for the quietness. And he just said, when America, he, when America, when America, because is, he made up all he made all that strong language. Now now Kim Jong is backing off. When, uh, when the, uh, he also said, when uh, the country realizes that I've gotten them a million new jobs. Well, yeah. where are He's those? He's been working hard getting his new jobs. Yeah, how many new jobs are there now? He said 100 one, million. 
No, he said one million. He said, no, it just keeps going up. It's one hundred million. No, no, but I'm saying, how many new jobs are there now, and how do they compare with other administrations? I heard. So that, the, I, I heard I think that, the better question is, how come now he believes these numbers, but he didn't before? Because he numbers. controls them. He controls them now. You think ah. he's not controlling them? He's a control he freak. He, he controls that stuff. He can make and shave it this way and that way. No, here, here's, your, here, here, here's your friend, Phil. Oh, hey, Steve. No, I haven't put him on yet because he's not calling using a, a camera, so we can't see him. No, I told him to just call in the phone number. Oh, okay. Well, you talk to him. Hey, Steve. Hey, Phil. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. My, um, can you okay. all hear me, by the way? Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve, the you. reason I yeah. asked you to call... Yeah, we can was, hear you. Thank hmm? you. That's just a small sound check I was doing. Oh, does somebody have their audio on? Uh, okay. Uh, Steve, the reason I asked you to call was that Alex had made a statement uh, that I had I did not have the answer for. Uh, he wanted to know, or he said, that if there was a pornography uh, film and the uh, actor was under uh, was not under 18 but was portrayed to be under 18, that that would be child pornography. Can you uh, allude on that? Well... That's not technically correct. The, in order for it to be child pornography under the state definition, and there is no such thing as pornography. It's obscene material. Um, the state looks at child pornography in a, in a very similar way to the rest of the country and to the federal statutes. But what, what uh, Alex is probably alluding to is the new change in the law that occurred about five years ago that said that you can have I strike that, that you can no longer have uh, depictions of children uh, engaged in sexual acts. And this comes about really as a result of the computer-generated uh, pornography or ch computer-generated child mm -hmm. pornography where they would take uh, adult actors and make them look like child children and portray childlike events in order to appeal to child uh, to people who have yeah. the paraphilia of uh, child so I, I, I am being their predilection. I, I am correct that that would be looked upon uh, as prosecutable. Well, yes and no. I mean, it's not quite that simple. There's something called child erotica and there's something called child pornography. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between the two. Generally, what you're talking about, and again, what this comes as a result of is the child pornographers were trying to get around the federal statute, not the state statute, and utilizing drawings and utilizing adult actors to portray uh, childlike events. And the federal government, not the state government, changed the law and said that is now unlawful. Mm -hmm. But that in and of itself, if the, ch if the actors can prove that they're 18, uh, is generally not a prosecutable offense on its face. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't be prosecuted. It just means that if that's the only thing that you're looking at, generally the U.S. attorney or in states that have that law, the district attorney or, or the state prosecutor would not be willing to but go it, If I were to do, a, if, if I were to create a piece of pornography, not that I ever would, that <laughs> portrayed uh, a, a, a actress of 18 years old who looked very young, Okay, and could pass for 15, even 14, and then pass this off as a child having sex with, oh, say, an adult male, uh, that, that could be prosecutable, now, couldn't it? Well, the way, that, the way that you couch it, yes, but because you're stating that you're trying to attempt to pass that off as child pornography. So well, you're, in you're, that you're certainly, circumstance, you're certain, it would be yeah. prosecutable, not for the child pornography yeah. necessarily, but for the attempted distribution of child pornography, which is a separate violation. Yeah. So, so what the hell is the big difference? Well, there are several differences. You're, you're on with uh, other people. <laughs> make the law of uh, as as part as you possibly can, so you can get more money out of people. Here's how. Before you continue, here's how I see it. The way I see it is, if uh, you know, you have a facsimile of child pornography, it's like what the e-cigarette is to a heavy chain smoker. As long as they're <laughs> going to a, you know, a, 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 as long as they're puffing on something that's not going to affect anybody else. Who the fuck cares? Well, I mean, that, that would be your thinking of it, but it also appeals to the pederast notions of certain people who would as seek out that As long as they're not doing the real thing and fucking Jimmy Jr. John Schlong and Cuntalina Tina, I don't care. 
Well, so that, those are those are nice statements for you to make from a moral perspective, but that's different than a legal perspective, and you need to keep those two separate. Certainly, the statements that you're making are revealing about who you are and what you like, but it's not germane to the discussion of whether or not adults can participate in pornography acting as children. Steve, Brian is more into things involving lower, large white horses, if you must know. <laughs> well, whatever his paraphilia is isn't really the subject whatever of this discussion. Adults, the, human adults engage in, you know, or more, as long as they're of consenting age, I don't give a shit. They're flesh and blood. As far as, you know, getting somebody's pedophilia fix on, in on something that's not real. Again, again, that's, so that's your personal opinion, and that's fine. You're entitled to have your personal opinion, but your personal opinion doesn't carry the weight of law. Yeah, the weight of law is a bunch of horse shit as far as this is this this aspect of it is concerned. You see, I know. Well, again, that's yeah. your personal opinion. And yeah. if the show is about your personal opinion, then that's wonderful and feel free to espouse it. But yeah. the well, reason I, I called is there was a question of law, and I'm I'm prepared to answer that question if I'm able, and if I'm not, I certainly will tell you I'm not able. But the questions that you're posing, which are, are fairly black and white, aren't really viewed that way from the courts. So there's something called the black letter of the law, and there's something called the spirit of law. And those two things are viewed from the courts somewhat different, differently at different times. But the courts do a lot of social engineering. What yeah. the courts are trying to do with pedophilia and with child pornography is the same, and that is to limit the victimization of children. Uh, what they found, and this isn't the courts, these are the uh, the PhDs that do research into paraphilias, what they found is that the people who view adult depictions of child pornography, whether they're child actors or not, are looking to satisfy a very specific thing within their own arousal cycle. And for those people to whom children appear to be sexual objects, there is a difference between the adults depicting it and the children. And so most of the studies have found that people who are pedophiles will view child porn differently than they will do view adult actors acting as child pornography and child. Uh, but if they don't know the uh, difference, if they, if they honestly believe that the illusion right. is that this is a child, uh, then uh, is it not satisfying the pederasty of that individual? It, it it may, and there's a spectrum there that you can't really make a blanket statement that it will that it will or it won't. There is a spectrum, and for some people, um, they derive a lot of masturbatory pleasure from looking at depictions of of adults that appear to be children, and that seems to uh, be enough for them. For other people, uh, much in the same way that tobacco and marijuana were seen as gateway drugs, they look at the the uh, barely legal porn that's out there yeah. and all of the other kinds of uh, depictions of childlike behavior as lessening the boundaries, as a way to break through those boundaries and normalize the behavior of victimizing children. And I think we would all agree that that's, that it, that's wrong, that we should not normalize the victimization of children. Well, so the yeah. PhDs, not the police and not the courts, are the ones who make the decisions right. about whether or not the evidence supports that that is the case. The courts then rule on what the behavior can or can't be, and that behavior yeah. would include those things which were are offensive in nature, such as child Steve, pornography. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, uh, Alex, for calling. Thank you very much for calling. Can can you, one no, other no, no, no more. Oh, Alex? Because we have to go yeah, thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. I really it. appreciate it, Steve. No problem. Okay, very good. No Steve, problem. Sorry. Okay, so what, what, do we, what do we find out? Uh, nothing, really. I mean, no, it, we it's, found out that, uh, that uh, you were right about the thing. It, it happened five years ago, and I'm not familiar. I've been out of that for 10, 12 years. Yeah. All right, Phil, that's 50,000 GabNet bucks that you owe. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a check. <laughs> I, I don't. We don't take checks from. All right, it's in the mail then. then it, <laughs> he's going to send you a check on the Gabnet checking account. Gabnet though. checking account. Yeah. Hey, Just you know the, the other thing. question I, I wanted to ask him was that free speech question and and how and why uh, the. Uh, why ch uh, child pornography would not be allowed free speech, but uh, you know, Nazis would, for instance. Oh. And he didn't get, he let me ask him. Uh, well, uh, uh, we can do that another time.
But I, I want I wanted to get back to our main discussion here. I didn't, we, we, again, you derail us. Hey, uh, I got your guest, which is more than you were able to do in <laughs> nine out of ten. <laughs> oh, I have, I have. Here um, we go. I have. Uh, let me see yeah, here. Right now, I now. have uh, uh, ten guests. Actually, no, 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 no. you have ten participants. No, I have ten guests. I also have guests oh, on every night. Meyer. I don't Bubble. just dance on eggshells. Bub- I slam dance on them. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, if you like, I'll bitch slap him so your hands don't get dirty. Oh, okay. Ooh. Can I interrupt? Yeah. Coco is barking, so I'm going to have to take right. I have to cut short tonight. Bye, Coco. Okay, yeah, she's playing with a rope, but she was barking, so I don't want to wake my mother up upstairs. I'm going to have to cut. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. How much that irritates Alex. She has a rope right now. Come on, Coco. Okay, well, uh, well then we'll, we'll 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 see you later. Okay, good night. Uh, good night. Bye. Bring a bag with you. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oops. Uh, let me see here. I gotta do. I'm I'm constantly having to adjust this picture because once uh, Renee came into the picture, she wasn't in the picture, and I had to widen the the whole frame so that we could uh, we could have her. Uh, in uh, on the citizens panel, uh, have you been listening? Hi, Renee. You, you listened to our fine president hey. today, didn't you, Renee? No, I wanted to read what he said. Yeah, yeah. and what did you? What I was your? What was your takeaway? So so far, so, I went to get my eyes examined today. So because I'm all excited about Jack's 30 day contacts thing now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so believe it or not. The doctor said to me, this jackass can say something bad about Fox News or something bad about a Rosie O'Donnell and take it back within five seconds. But he doesn't say anything in 48 hours to rebut Nazis. Somebody said, said somebody you know, said it took him longer to rebut himself from what he had said on Saturday. It, it took him more time than it takes for Amazon Prime to deliver a package. <laughs> I think that was I think it was Stephen Colbert last night. You're probably right about that, Alex, because I ordered something from Amazon on Sunday, and I got it today. Yeah. Well, I, I think yeah. that was Stephen Colbert's line to Scaramucci yesterday on, on his show. Did anybody see Scaramucci on his show, by the way? I saw Scaramucci. Scaramucci, yeah. Yeah, I saw snippets. I thought he was entertaining, uh, from what I saw. So, I, I think he's. I would like to know. I think uh, he's a San bull Francisco's hard. having one of those punk ass rallies. Is anybody else thinking about going? What rally? Like, over. Who's who's rallying? Oh, the racist KKK Nazi people are coming to Christie Field mm-hmm. in oh, San Francisco. Shit. Oh boy. Mm, I say really I good. say that what the best plan of uh, action is in a situation like that. Just let them do their little thing at Chrissy Field, and uh, don't even, don't even, don't cover it. Don't, don't. Yeah. Get... Well, agreed in the sense that you get to identify who the fuck faces are. Hope for yeah. so I, have, I have two evil. For first off, I want to take up. Think about this: of all the bad things you've ever heard about Nazis, and you have a chance to go kick one of their asses. And it's what fifty years later. Well, you're playing in. Like- you're playing into what uh, what Trump said today. <laughs> what he asserted. You know, the funny thing is, if they did it in San Francisco, they probably wouldn't be legally armed, like they were in Virginia. You're probably right. See? That's probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know what? With all that illegal, with they're not legally armed because many of them were from out of state, and you cannot transport these weapons. Oh, interstate. Really? Well, yeah. maybe, 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 maybe you can't do it interstate for sale, but maybe you can do it for personal use. I don't maybe think there so. was a Nazi armor in Virginia, so, and, and well, they did was. Oh. So, Rob, I know in the state of California that's a fact. I don't know if that's a fact for your Commonwealth state. Do you know if that's a fact for the Commonwealth? I don't think you're allowed to transport weapons across state lines. No, I don't think there's. Did, he, he wouldn't know. What that. happens in your state that you're registered? It's funny. For the two things you can't transport the, again across uh, state lines are women and guns. You've heard of the but, Man Act, the, haven't uh, you? But the thing that yeah, that was not. 
The thing that these Nazis better worry about about coming to my hometown and Alex's hometown, if the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are out, <laughs> and the oh. dice on bikes. The dice on bikes, yeah. Gonna yes. get an ass kicking. Oh no! Oh, doesn't oh, doesn't right. anybody else want to punch a Nazi in the face for all the horrible things that they did to the Jews? Absolutely, <laughs> let me near one. <laughs> You know, I, I'm in a couple of weeks. I'm having dinner. And I'm not even freaking Jewish. I, I'm having dinner with my friend Jack Garfine and his lovely woman Natalia, and the cat. And the uh, cat. And the cat. Is it visitation? And he, and he was. Yeah, it's a visitation. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 the um, uh, he was in a concentration camp. In fact, eleven of them. I would like to know how he feels about turning on his television set. And seeing these fucking morons with their Nazi flag. And the That's fact all- that these guys, these guys, Phil, you cannot deny it when you, if you saw interviews with them and you saw what they were shouting. They're animals. No, wait a minute. Trump gave them a sense of permission because they were, yep. they were literally saying, we voted for Donald Trump. We're, we want to bring, make America great again. We want to bring America back to white America. That, blah, 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 blah. David, Duke, Duke said, David Duke acknowledged that. Yeah, David Duke said, uh, we put you in the White House. Uh, you should be supporting us. No, and, and, then, uh, and, and then, don't then after he made the statements on Saturday, David Duke said how well, wonderful he felt about Donald Trump. Exactly. Yeah, he released the statement, and, and then they that read Chris, that statement. Who's, that other, who's the other he guy? Doesn't, Chris, he doesn't, uh, apparently, uh, you have selective information getting to you, Phil. That's not true. Uh, what uh, you know, I, I I heard the statement by David Duke, and Trump said that he disavows David Duke. But he doesn't so, say anything like that. He just He's didn't blaming that all yet. sides. He needs to. Well, his answer, his answer, yeah, his answer yeah, to the question about David Duke wasn't that David Duke is an asshole and he's a he's a member of the, the head of the KKK. And uh, I wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't say that. What he said was, "I never heard of the man." That's no, what that he was, said. That was an That's earlier he statement, said. and he was asked, uh, and he and he took it out of context. And, and when, uh, uh, when did you hear when Abe Duke endorsed him and he said he didn't hear of him. And then uh, uh, mm-hmm. a little later, he says, I don't accept the endorsement of David Duke when he was running for president. Uh, that that so was years ago. But, not, but now, uh, what did he uh, say? a recent one. Look, what did why did we now? believe? Now he says he disavows David Duke. Why and he just disavows the KKK. He says it all. Mm-hmm. He obviously yeah, doesn't disavow David Duke. He doesn't disavow the Ku Klux Klan because he refuses to hold them responsible for what went on in Charleston and, and makes excuses for their bad behavior, only allowing them to do more well, of it. I think, you're, I think you're only looking at part of the picture. Yeah. I'm sure I don't like Nazis. I hate yeah. Nazis. But I, would, I think that the alt-left tried to intimidate them and force them. Uh, they the were, they were now you're using the term alt uh, Did you hear him? But he's now using the term. There. He's now using the term alt-left because it's you're the right. new there term. There were agitators there that went to fight on both sides. Then, and they were looking for a fight and they got a fight. Then good. I'm tired of the left taking it up the ass. Right. Yeah. There's a good uh, meme on Facebook that dovetail that Jack just said and what Phil just said. The fact of the matter is, Facebook Phil, today. I mean, was, you, 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 hey, you, Jack. you, you uh, yes, uh, Tim. Real quick question. There's about there's hundreds of different white supremacist groups. What we need to do is come up with one name, and I think we should call them the White American ISIS because they're using Ooh, ISIS. I saw techniques. that too. Yeah. I saw Works that too. Works for me, brother. Works for me. And, um, and you know why it works really well is because ISIS doesn't have a home country, and and if you call these guys either. that, they would have a shit fit. ISIS uh, didn't uh, the White attorney American general ISIS. didn't the attorney general say that uh, he didn't think that what happened uh, with the guy running down the woman with the car was uh, 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 terrorism uh, and. Uh, Hey, we yeah. need a special counsel, Phil. Sessions is part of the alt-right. We need a special counsel to investigate I think that he murder. Was, 
I think he was just looking at, at the law and... Um, well, why don't we quit? Why don't we just quit using the word alt-right? And of course, Phil is now using alt-left because the president is now using it, uh, a term that didn't exist two days ago. Um, uh, I've been using alt-left for a while. I keep calling Amy alt-left. Yes, I, I'm sure Bannon thought that up for him, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, it does have Bannon shit all over it, smell all over it, doesn't yeah. it? Yes, Brian. <laughs> Who do we wow. lose? Yes, Brian. But anyway, that's uh, a man that read that reads uh, neo Nazis, like a screenplay. Neo Nazis, colon, what they say. Let's commit acts of genocide. And uh, the anti anti fascist, anti fascist, colon. Let's not. <laughs> and uh, below that, uh, Black Lives Matter people. Home. I thought it was the anti. Please don't kill me. <laughs> and then below that, centrist. I can't tell between the three. <laughs> well, pick a side, motherfucker, because you know, the, the differences are as plain as the nose on my face. And that's why I call Brian my yeah. illegitimate okay. first. Uh, Renee has her hand up. Alex, would you ask your Holocaust gentleman friend if he was 50 years younger? and he was in the position of the people in San Francisco, where would he be now? It, would he go to one of these events or would he stay away from these events? Well, I, Knowing what he knows, doing what he's done, if he could take over my body and possess it, would he go to that event? I, you know, I don't know if that's a, a proper question to ask, to be honest with you, okay. because, um, uh, it's he's not 50 years younger, and uh, he has to take it for how he feels now. I think that the problem is, I, all I said is, I'd like to know what he thinks when he sees these Nazi flags being foistered upon yeah. the public. The survivor I, that I knew said that he didn't really know what was going on before he wound up in the camp. He just, he, they, they just, you know were there and they were kids basically and they didn't understand what was happening and so at the time if you if you put yourself in the time uh, 70 years ago uh, when uh, the nazis were rounding up jews uh, you know they they just they didn't realize that that was what was happening Gee, a Jew it'd be very up. hard to do today wouldn't it because of all social well, media internet, it'd be yeah. hard to yeah it'd be hard to cover up something like that exactly well today it could never happen but uh, or, oh, or it could oh, happen, oh, but oh it, really it, it it wouldn't happen without knowing what it would happening. be forceful much more forcibly than they were when they, because you know, you heard that they were rounding them up. They, these people went kind of peacefully because yes, they didn't think they didn't where, they, where they were. Yeah, they didn't know where they were going. It would be difficult today. Well, I know uh, I saw a thing on Facebook today from a man who was ninety, who is ninety-three years old, World War II veteran, and he said, 73 years ago, I whipped their ass. I guess I may have to get ready to whip it again. Damn good job of his. <laughs> yeah, well. It, Wish him luck. <laughs> it may well be, you know. Uh, but it, it uh, you know, all I'm saying is, is that when we, when, we look, when we look at a person being the leader of our country, we look for moral leadership. We look for somebody who is going, ah. to, inst who is going to instill in us the the values that America stands for and that he stands for, and we don't have that with this president. No, we got it. What do you mean? Yeah, they're his values, and I he stands agree. for KKK and Nazis and misogyny and well, Wait a minute, look, Scott. Scott hasn't talked much. Tonight. Scott hasn't exactly. talked. Morality of our adversary. Scott hasn't yes. talked much tonight, and he started talking. Let's let him finish his thought. Yes. No, I said it all. I mean, yeah. you asked. We got the values he stands for, right? That's the answer to your question. Why do we, we have, have the? Stand for? Certainly got what is not racist? So what you're saying that, is that's, that's okay. That's his only base he has left in the, in 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 the whole United States is all these pig fuckers, you know? Yeah. That's a point, point. Thank you. Did Brian just say that? That's the kind of thing usually Brian well, says. I've been hanging around Brian too much. <laughs> <laughs> And that's giving pig fuckers a bad name. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, should Trump true. be allowed to have any more rallies himself? He ran his rallies oh, like a KKK meeting. I think Trump should not yeah. be allowed to have any more rallies. Yeah. They're well, going to be violent. 
He's the president. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Well, I don't think he should. We can stop him too. We're the we we. He works for us, buddy. This Did is, you yeah. notice yeah. if, if we the, can stop him? That, why haven't we stopped him so far? Why has he been allowed to get away with this this crap? Well, he has the getting... microphone. Did you notice that thing you played? Those four minutes. That any time that he wanted to overspeak, uh, one of the questioners, uh, mm -hmm. his 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 uh, audio got turned up. Well, yeah. it, what I, they did was. In all fairness, okay. I'd turn uh, my audio up, too, what, if I were the reporter. No, what they did is when somebody in the, in the crowd, in the press corps, asked a question, they turned his mic down so you could hear them. Uh, and then they would bring it back up when he was going to give the reply. That's what that was all about. Uh, yeah. Well, what uh, I would do if I was running sound is that I would tell him that the mic was off until that moment before he, he wants to, he just raises his finger and I would make it hot the entire time. So he would think that it was off, but he had to listen yeah. to the- Like, like in face of the crowd. You know? Hey, listen, he, he, we, we don't have to hear what he says when he doesn't know the mic is on. It's the same thing he says when the mic is on. That's the problem. Right. Right. I mean, are you in a slight bit worried, uh, 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 Phil? that this guy is going to hurt the Republicans and going to hurt the conservative cause in this country? I don't really like the Republicans. I don't like the Democrats. And I am for him hurting them all. So what are you, a Nazi? What, what, what are you? No, I'm a John Bircher, I guess. Really? Uh, you don't even know what the John Birch Society is or was. But you don't have a party, Phil. Pardon me? Well, you don't have a party. When was the last time... The John oh, Birch ran as a party. There is no John yeah, Birch party. He's probably a libertarian. Maybe. Uh, libertarian ladings, but you did not before. Uh, you know, you are a hardliner against drugs. The um, when you the, yourself have been Biden. The, I, I believe that all of these guys, both Republicans and Democrats, they're all there for their own self-serving interests. They want power, and they have absolutely no regard for the common man. And yeah. uh, as far as good. concerned, and, and how I, how is them, Trump any different? Yeah, I was going to say that you know he doesn't like them either. He, he, statement he, he tells you he doesn't idiot. like them. Well, you know, uh, he goes out against the Republicans. He goes out against Democrats. It doesn't matter to him. Well, because they all he hate him. Opportunity. Well, he, he hates hasn't got them. his base. And you know what? So do hey, I. Hey, hey, he. Why should he hate the Republicans? They got him elected. Rob, you were trying to say yeah, something. Elected. Rob was trying. Rob was trying to say elected. something. Rob. No, I, like I said, I, I, I said what I was going to say, which is you're just believing everything Trump says. You're, you're, if, if he tells you something and you just believe it. His actions are louder than words. He went out against McConnell. He went, uh, you know, he, he went against Schumer. It doesn't matter. He, he went against, uh, uh, you know, uh, McCain. He went against Republicans regardless of what he needed or didn't want because he's speaking against the swamp. And they are the both the Republicans and the Democrats. They are the swamp. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? Well, they also cut the funding for the anti-Nazi uh, uh, activity that was going on too. What does he have to show for it, Phil? What does he have to show for it? Uh, well, he says forty between forty-two and forty-eight pieces of legislation and a whole shitload of uh, of uh, what, what are those things they signed? Executive orders. Executive orders. No, no, no. Yeah, but, but he didn't. He didn't. But let me just say this, and then we're going to have to go. Uh, but the fact is, he didn't initiate any of this legislation. It was initiated by the Congress, and right, that, but he that he it. no, he signed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that needed but his he, no, but he right. didn't get it passed. He, in fact, well, he sits back on his haunches and doesn't do any work to get yeah, anything but, passed. Goes, but all of that... He got us, it, us, Alex, us. he got one thing done. He doubled the membership fee at his golf resort. Well, that's yeah, good. got Gorsuch named to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah, all, all After ramrodding it through us. Yeah. Anyway, Thanks, hey, listen, so that's it that. for tonight. I'm fed up with this country. And if I were younger, I would leave it tomorrow. Okay. Oh, don't let the door hit you in That's the ass. That's has crossed no, my mind. No, no, I mean, I, I just would be looking for a country where I felt there was a little more morality going on. I've and had to try to explain this to a 12-year-old girl lately, and it's been not easy. Why you're not leaving? 
No, just this bullshit that's going on with our government. Yeah. The moral God, leader God. Anyway, hey, especially hey, the hey, hatred going on. Thanks to everybody who was here. Your friend Steve, who called uh, <laughs> Phil, uh, to yeah. Rob Alfano, to Phil Meyer, to uh, Tim, to uh, Jack Bishop, to Renee Collins, to Scott Boddicker, to Kevin, uh, uh, to uh, Mike, who, by the way, missed doing a good show Saturday night. He calls all the time. He even called on Saturday when I was testing uh, Skype. But when it comes to an actual show, he f didn't get to call. But it was a good show on Saturday night, wasn't it, Rob? Yeah, it was. It was really it was excellent. Good. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, thank you, Brian, who, who you didn't know that was going on either. I Scott didn't know. know that was going on. Kevin didn't know. Who else was here? Anybody else that I'm missing? Uh, I, uh, get, I guess sure. I got everybody. We had a whole cluster. Oh, yeah. it was was it the same time? Is it, are these tests usually the, the same time as your week? Weeknight. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. was. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, everybody. I want to uh, have you all wave goodbye. Uh, and God we'll, bless we'll, America. Well, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow, same time. Uh, by the way, Jack and Amy are next with the intersection. And then I will be back with you again uh, tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her.